Hey, you're back. All right, it's lesson number four in the operations on the real numbers. We spent a lot of time working with fractions, but now we're ready to see the true nature of the real numbers. All right, well, let's get right to it. We know that the real numbers are the integers and all the numbers in between, and we've spent a ton of time looking at some of the numbers in between. But it turns out if you really want to understand what's going on in between, you need something else. And here it comes. Guys, decimals. Decimals. They're the key. Turns out decimals are just fractions in the tens family. So what I mean by that are fractions like tenths, hundredths, thousandths, etc. For example, 7 tenths, 31 hundredths, 9 thousandths, 4,301 ten thousandths, those are all decimals. In fact, there they are, 0 0.7, 0 0.31, all the way down the line. Okay, and by the way, so 0.7 or 7 tenths, if you wanted to represent that, then we've got it covered, right? Because 7 tenths is just a fraction. That decimal, 0.7 or 7 tenths, we could represent it with bars just like we always would. There it is, 10 equal pieces in color and seven. Nothing to it, all right? Um, I'll tell you what, if you wanted to go crazy with a decimal, and that might, that's a good idea. Let's go crazy, because that might let us explore all the different decimal place values. That turns out to be super duper important. So here's a huge decimal. Ah, what am I saying? It's a long decimal. Actually, as a number, it's very, very small. So let's take a look at these place values. I'm going to go, uh, you know, just to the left of the decimal point. That's our ones. We don't have any. So this is, this is a small, tiny number, okay? The four, right to the right of the decimal point, that's in the tenths. One place over, that's the hundredths. The five is in the hundredths with a TH on the end. See those, see those fraction denominators uh, with the tens? Tenths hundredths. Now, new thing, thousandths. The eight is in the ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths. I want to draw your attention to something. See, thousandths, then we had ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and then a new name, millionths. Now watch, the one is in the ten millionths, two in the hundred millionths. So again, we get that common um, thing, 10 of them, 100 of them, new thing. Okay? We've seen that before. Billions, 10 billionths, 100 billionths, trillions. So this number is actually a fraction with a denominator of 1 trillion. So it's in the trillions. Pretty crazy, huh? Take a look at that structure. It's pretty important that you recognize all those places and that you can accurately name them um, and count with them. Um, just like in, our, in, in the whole numbers, every time you move to the right, it's 10 times as big. Every time you move to the right, it's one-tenth the size. It's 10 times smaller, okay? And that, that holds as we go to the right of the decimal point as well, okay? Now, I'll tell you what, let's try to, let's remember how we uh, go between these things. If you have a fraction, excuse me, if you have a decimal and you want to write it as a fraction, well, you guys probably remember, it's all about figuring out where that last number, in this case, the seven, what decimal place is that in? Well, going back to our list, we can, we can just remember that going through our, our tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousand, millionths, 10 millionths. It's in the 10 millionths place. That's our denominator. See the four to the left of the decimal point? That's our, that's our whole number. So this is definitely going to be a mixed number. Uh, this decimal is more than one. So we're going to have four and some amount of 10 millionths. And the some amount is just that decimal, uh, the digit you see to the right of the decimal point right here. Okay. Notice. 810, 400, 
excuse me, 810,427 10 millions. That's the fractional part. Okay? All right. Percents are always super cool, right? We know they're just a, a different way of saying hundredths. So now that translates very easily into decimals. So if we have 7%, which we know is 7 hundredths, now we have a nice decimal way of writing that as well. 7 in the hundredths place. Looking good? All right. Um, let's run through a few basic ideas just to make sure everything's uh, making sense with these decimals. The first thing is, uh, in terms of writing them, you should know that adding zeros onto the end of a decimal uh, number doesn't change the value. So like for example, 0.7, that's the same as 0 0.700. Those zeros on the end do not change the value of that number. And likewise, 0 0.0415, or 415 ten thousandths, it doesn't matter if you tack on those four zeros onto the end, it's the same exact number, okay? One little bit of warning though, zeros in amongst the digits, the non-zero digits, uh, like this one right at the front, that does matter, that zero does matter, all right? It's the ones at the end, you can just tack them on to the end and it doesn't change the value. Okay, another basic idea is close to. We've we worked on that in all our number sets so far. So you should know that 7.0639 or 7.9002, you want to get a handle on what those are close to, just a nice number sense. Well, 7.0639, that's really just close to 7. And 7.9002, that's really close to 8. Well, why? Why is that? They're, they're, they're sort of the same length. Guys, length has nothing to do with the size of a decimal. So take a look. The magic number is the tenths digit, all right? The zero in that top number in the tenths place, that's what's making this whole decimal very, very close to seven. And likewise, the 7.9 whatever, whatever, that's really, really close to eight. Okay, so it's the tenths, the tenths rule in terms of seeing what whole number those decimals are close to. All right? Um, half. We've seen half as a really important benchmark, a nice reference point, and with decimals, that's no different. You just need to know that 0.5, other, in other words, 5 tenths, that's one half. So now you've got your reference in the decimal world too. So 4.512, well, that's greater than four and a half. And 4.71, that's also greater than four and a half. Four and a half is 4.5. And 4.39989, well, look at that tenths place. Still, it rules there. That's less than 4.5, okay? Less than four and a half. All right, comparing to half stays important no matter what form of these numbers we're looking at. Now. Talk about rounding in general for a second, because sometimes decimals get so long, we don't need all the information. We've sort of seen that um, in that <clears throat> close to kind of examination. <clears throat> well, if you're asked to take a number like 6.837 and round it to the nearest tenth, you guys probably remember how to do this. I just, I just want to run through the, the idea just to make sure we're on the same page. To the nearest tenth. So what number's in the tenth place? The eight, right? The eight digit is in the tenth place. So to round to the tenth place, you actually look to the place to the right. So the hundredth place in this case. So look at that three. Any, any digit zero up to and including four, we will keep that digit the same, the keep the tenth digit the same. Five or higher in the next place, then we round our digit up, okay? So we're the eight is our digit in the tenths place, so we look to, to the right of it, we see that three, so that means keep that tenth the same. Drop everything else after it, and we just see that that's about 6.8, rounded to the nearest tenth. To the nearest hundredth, we do exactly the same thing, except now it's the three digit that we're really uh, interested in. We look to the digit directly to its right. It's now a seven. So remember, five or higher, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in that place, 
we round our digit up. So that means that to the nearest hundredth, this is 6.84 rounded up. Okay, excellent. Uh, just comparing in general, you should know, um, again, it, it, length has nothing to do with who's bigger in the decimal world. What you want to do is just line up the two numbers. Let's say you're trying to decide between these two who's bigger. Well, just line them up uh, on the left, line them up on the left, and just start checking decimal place by decimal place. Start on the far left. So if they're the same in the ones digit, we've got fours. Same in the tenths, there's seven. But look at that. In the hundredth place, there's a difference. And as soon as you see a difference, game over. Whichever one is the bigger digit, well, that whole decimal is the bigger number. So since um, nine is bigger than eight, then that bottom number is the bigger one. The top number is, in fact, smaller than 4.7903. Looking okay? Line them up. Just examine them decimal place by decimal place. Now, here's the huge fact. This is super duper important. And it's actually sort of letting on this nature of the real numbers. Every real number is a decimal. And it might be in disguise. It might not look like a decimal, but it is a decimal. Okay? Box that in in your notes. Every real number is a decimal. Maybe in disguise. So, for example, the number three. This is what I mean by maybe in disguise. It doesn't look like a decimal, but you guys know, of course, we can write it as 3.0. Three-fourths. Well, you know what? Remember that that was 75%. We talked about those famous percentages. Uh, well, 75 hundredths or 0.75. So even three-fourths, it's really 0 0.75, 75 hundredths. Three-eighths. Now, that one might not be as easy to convert into hundredths uh, or tenths or thousandths. Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but it might not be as obvious as the three-fourths. Let, let me just tell you, instead of, instead of trying to figure it out, can we uh, anti-simplify it into a tenth or a hundredth or a thousandth or whatever? Just go ahead. You can always just divide it. So three-eighths, if I do that division, if I take three and I divide it by eight, be careful with that order, right? Three-eighths. 3 divided by 8. Well, 8 doesn't go into 3, so let me drop that decimal point. Hey, we're using that top fact. 3 is really the same as 3.0. And let me put the decimal up there. So 8 goes into 30. Yes, it does. 3 times 24. We can subtract it. We get 6. Let me drop another 0, right? We can tack on zeros on the end all, all day if we want. Bring that down. 8 goes into 60. Yep. 7 times. Subtract that. Okay. Not done dividing, so let me keep going. And 8 goes into 40 five times. Ooh, and look at that. I get 0. I'm done. So 3 eighths is really 0.375 as a decimal. Looking okay? All right, one more. This one really surprised a lot of people. This is this is pretty 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 wild. One third. Now, no matter what we do, uh, what whatever form of one we multiply in, I don't, we're not going to convert this into a uh, tenth or a hundredth or a thousand. One of those fractions in the tens family. Um, but we can do our division, right? So let's do it. One third. or one divided by three, Let me drop this down, add a zero. Three goes into 10 three times. Subtract 10 minus nine, get one, hmm. okay. Put a zero here. Three goes into 10 times, well, actually we just did that, didn't we? It goes three times. Three times three is nine. Wait a minute, another 10? Wait, this is just gonna continue, isn't it? And I'm just going to get more threes up in the answer. So this decimal is actually infinite. There's no end to it. It's just 0 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, all the way down. Wow. Okay. Well, 
Oh, let me get that out of your way. Excuse me. Look at that then. 0.3333 dot dot dot. The dot 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 just means keep on doing what you see. And that's pretty easy. It's all threes. There's also that notation where you can put the bar over the digit or digits that repeat. Okay, you guys have seen that before. Um, that's pretty wild. All right, but even that, that weird thing, it's still a decimal. Might be an infinite one. All right. Now, all of those numbers, in fact, all the numbers that we've been looking at up till this point, they're all rational numbers, okay? All those decimals that we've looked at so far are rational numbers. And you might think, well, wait, don't we, don't we have them all? I mean, is that it? So the rational numbers are, are just the real numbers? It turns out, and it's so bizarre, there's this, we're missing some, we're missing some. There's this other set of decimals and man, are they crazy. We've got our rational numbers. The other set is called the irrational, the not rationals. So they're the other decimals and they are as weird as they come. Now you might think, well, okay, there's just like a handful of weirdos in the group. No. There are more irrational numbers than there are rational, believe it or not. So that's such an insane idea to think about, right? There's these weird numbers and you start to poke around. It's like, oh my gosh, there's more here, more here, more. There's just way more irrational numbers than there are rationals. Well, just as an example to show you what these numbers are like, let's take the square root of 10. Now the square, square roots, and I know you guys have worked with before, like square root of nine is three, um, square root of 16 is four. You guys remember why? Square root of 16 is four because four times four gets you 16, okay? Um, so square root of 10, square root of 10 is probably, you're probably thinking, well, square root of nine is three, square root of 10 is probably a little bit more than three, and you're exactly right. But here's where it gets weird. The decimal version of square root of 10, look at that, 3.16227766016837 dot dot dot, but that dot dot dot's a little different than the dot 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 we had before where it was like, oh, you mean just keep putting threes forever? Like three, 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 three. This one, we don't know what's coming next. That's why I put the little question mark there. In fact, this decimal goes on forever. Now we've seen that before, that's not a big deal. But it does not repeat a digit or digits. Every time you see a decimal place value, it, uh, the face value in that decimal place, it's something that you, you could never predict. You never know what you're gonna get until you see it. They're just bizarre, all right? Well, with that, with that, oh, Wait a minute, I do need to tell you this. Even though they're so weird, like they go on forever and you never know what's coming, there's still an exact spot on the number line, right, right around three. You can see it in the number, just a little bit to the right of three. That's where square to 10, this number, that's where it lives. All right, with that, I think we're ready to see the, the real numbers in all their glory, okay? The integers and then all the numbers in between. And now I hope you have a better appreciation for how many numbers are in between and the weirdness of some of them, right? The rationals, the irrationals, the fractions, uh, the rationals. Look at this. There they are. Man, I, and by the way, it's, it looks kind of crowded in there, but that's just a sampling, okay? A paltry slant sampling of, of real numbers in between those integers. Um, but that's it, okay? The real numbers are all the possible decimals. And you're looking at a nice representation of them there on the number line. Whew. All right. That was a lot of stuff about the real numbers. Boy, I hope that review uh, helped out. Either filled in some things that you might have been uh, still wondering about or just sort of went back through and deepened your understanding of the real numbers. So we've got, at this point, the real numbers under our belt. And by the way, if you're getting tired of writing the real numbers over and over again, here's a symbol for it. We just use this 
bold R, this sort of blackboard bold R, okay, for reels. All right, we're set with them. We've got the reels under our belts, and now we can turn our attention to the operation. And that's where we'll go in our next lesson. Great job, guys. I'll see you then.